Heavenly Father, we ask the blessing on the reading of your word. May your Holy Spirit be our guide today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And I don't know about you, but uh, going through these now, I, I usually do these uh, fairly early on Sunday morning. Uh, it's about 5.44 a.m. this Sunday uh, before uh, church. To me, it's just been a great way to uh, get ready for the week. Uh, but the Psalms have just been so encouraging, uh, reminding, uh, reminding me of the faithfulness of God, reminding me that even in my unfaithfulness, he's faithful, reminding me when I'm down, he can lift me up, reminding me that uh, <clears throat> it's his salvation, not mine. Uh, reminding me it's his righteousness, not mine. I don't, I don't have a righteousness that I could bring before him. All my righteousnesses are, are his filthy rags. But because of his righteousness, by Hebrews eleven six, it says, without faith it is impossible to please him. But once you've come to faith, now you can please him. You can do works for him. You know, we can live in his service. We can do things for him. Um and he'll hear our voice when we've put our trust in him. So let's pick up there with Psalm 64. Hear my voice, O God, in my prayer. Preserve my life from fear of the enemy. What things are coming against us today, let's remember that he's the one who can protect us. He's the one that's able to save us. I, I remember, again, uh, if you've never seen the movie The Hiding Place with uh, about Corey Ten Boom and her life and... <clears throat> how her family was protecting the Jewish people from uh, the Nazis of Germany and how they were then taken and uh, most of them died. Corey eventually was released on the technicality and able to go around the world and uh, preach about God's forgiveness and uh, had to work on forgiveness in her life. I mean, we've got things we've got to work on. She didn't have an easy time forgiving the people that had... Uh, you know, slaughtered her family, but she was able to only through the grace and the power of God. Um, well, <clears throat> her life was preserved from the enemy. She was able to lead many people to Christ. Uh, let's learn to rely on him no matter what we're going through. If you're his child, he wants to hear your voice. Verse two, hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked from the insurrection of the workers of iniquity. A lot of people think, you know, in this world, <clears throat> there's all these uh, conspiracy theories and things like that going around. Well, you know what? There's always the wicked that are working in the dark places. And, and there are people that want to rule this world. It, 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 the Bible makes that clear. But what we don't need to do is we don't need to sit and worry about that. Okay, <clears throat> we can be hidden in the rock, the cleft of the rock in, in Jesus Christ. We can be hidden like uh, when Moses uh, went up on the mount, he was, he was put in a little cleft of the rock. There's a picture of being in Christ and being in Christ when God passes by, we're, we're free from his judgment. Then Moses glowed. Well, why? Because we're in Christ. That's the only reason we have the ability to glow and shine before others. Okay, so, <clears throat> but we can be hidden when we're in Christ. It uh, doesn't mean that we might not suffer persecution. It says all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. If uh, we're in Christ, uh, we're going to have the world, the flesh, uh, the devil. Those are our enemies. The world's going to hate us. That's becoming more clear <clears throat> uh, People don't want righteousness. I mean, we can listen to mainstream media. Uh, mainstream media hates the righteousness of God. It's very clear. Um, but we can be hidden from the secret counsel of the wicked, from the insurrection of the workers of iniquity, who wet their tongue like a sword and bend their bows to shoot their arrows, even bitter words. Verse 4, that they may shoot in secret at the perfect Suddenly do they shoot at him and fear not. There are those that want to destroy God's perfect people. Why are we perfect? Not because of us. We're perfect because of Jesus Christ. But all we can do is we can just show them the way. 
verse 5, they encourage themselves in an evil matter. They commune of laying snares privily and say, who shall see them? They search out iniquities. They accomplish a diligent search. Both the inward thought of every one of them and the heart is deep. You know, it's always interesting to me how, uh, you know, especially in like the political realm, somebody who stands for righteousness, boy, they'll find something that that person did uh, years and years ago and try to spin it as if they're the most evil person in the world. But yet, you know, uh, so many people want just the wickedness and the things like that going on in the world. Uh, But if they'll find some fault, and guess what? You can find fault with anybody. You're going to find fault with all politicians just because uh, we're all sinners. But those that stand for the most wickedness, they want to twist the uh, the things that somebody's done in their past. If there's somebody who now is trying to stand for something that is uh, good and biblical. Um, so... Uh, they search out iniquities. They accomplish a diligent search, both the inward thought of every one of them and the heart is deep. But God shall shoot at them with an arrow. Suddenly they shall be wounded. You know, those that stand against God, one day they're going to face a judgment. And uh, it's appointed unto man once to die and then the judgment. When somebody falls, God's going to take them immediately to judgment. We want people to see that they can have uh, forgiveness in Christ, that they can be on the winning side. Verse 8, so shall they make their own tongue to fall upon themselves. All that see them shall flee away. You know, people's own words will testify against them one day in the day of judgment. Verse 9, and all men shall fear and shall declare the work of God, for they shall wisely consider of his doing. We talked last week. I said, you know, let's, uh, we don't, we can pray that our enemies uh, would not have success. I don't think we need to pray, you know, uh, in a way that uh, we're hateful of our enemies. But but we have enemies, and and we can pray to the Lord that they won't uh, rule and reign. They won't have success. We can pray that they come to Christ. That's the way they're not going to have success because they're no longer going to be our enemies. They're going to become our brothers and sisters in Christ. But uh, those that want to stand against the work of God, we can pray against that. And there's nothing wrong with that. Verse 10, the righteous shall be glad in the Lord and shall trust in him. And all the upright in heart shall glory. Now, we can go directly to the Lord because our trust is in Jesus Christ. Romans 8, 15 says, For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. You know, this psalm, as we're looking at it, it's about enemies coming against us. But we don't have to have fear, because our Heavenly Father, when you trusted Christ, He became your Heavenly Father. You can come to Him crying, Abba, Father. He's your Father, he is he is the one. Abba, he's he's your uh, he's your close. Uh, the best I can do with that is is like calling him daddy. He's he's your he's your Abba. He, there's a closeness, and he wants to hear from his children. Now James uh, five sixteen in that one. I'm just going to read the last part. It says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. You know. You're righteous, not because of what you did, but because of who you trusted in. And you can come to him fervently. You can come with him with a, to him with a passion. There's a, there's a hotness about our prayer, a, a desire of uh, wanting what is right. And let's remember, come, come to him fervently, come to him often, uh, as, as often as you like. You know, we're called to have... Uh, be in prayer continually. You know, you don't need to uh, every moment go and bow down. There's nothing wrong with bowing down, falling to your knees in prayer and crying out to God uh, for help. But you can be walking and you can be talking to the Lord. Why? Because his Holy Spirit dwells within you. We want to have, I think a lot of people have lost 
some of the reverence for God. We want to have reverence, but it doesn't mean we can't just talk to him as he is our heavenly father. He's Abba, Father, and we can talk to him throughout the day. So let me encourage you uh, today, if things feel like they're against you, remember, you've got a heavenly father who's there for you. You can come to him fervently, passion, passionately. He wants to hear your prayer. He wants to answer your prayer. He wants to give you comfort. May the Lord bless you with the reading of his word today.